So, uh, first of all, in the U.S., is it Ole or Ole? How how shall I pronounce your name? It's neither. It's Ole. Ole? Oh, is it O N E? Ole. Okay. Ole. You can say it. Either works. I'm not too picky. I, I know what you mean. Is it kind of like Ollie, but Ollie? It's Scandinavian. I mean, maybe if I so it's like Ollie Anderson. At the end, it would be easier to say. So it's like Ollie Anderson, like Arn's brother. Ollie. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Got okay. it. All right. The note just says here that uh, uh, you are calling to basically defend a secular belief in the concept of God. Um, yes, that's, that's true. And I think I'm going to piss off people on both sides here today, but, uh, I think it's worth having, but before we get into that, I just wanted to say thank you for giving me the chance to come on the show. Both of you guys have been very influential throughout my life and it's a great honor to speak to you. Sure. Great. Uh, it's not going to help, but go ahead. (laughs) You'll see, you'll see a little bit more. So. Maybe it will help if I explain where I fall on the atheist, theist spectrum, right? So I grew up in a very religious town, um, like so religious that they actually have a cross, like lit up. Only, on only, I'm the actually going to suggest to you that this won't help. I, 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 what yeah. your background is doesn't matter. I, and I'm doing this both for efficiency and because I've done the show a million times. I, I'm not meaning to be rude. The, your background story doesn't matter either what you are saying is valid and sound or it isn't, and it won't matter whether or not you came from a religious background. Uh, okay. I'd rather okay, just hear, fair. let's maybe start here then, if this is easier for you, if, if I direct. Are you s- suggesting that there is a significant difference between the concept of believing in God? Sorry, I shouldn't have used the word concept there. Is there a significant difference to you between believing in God and believing in the concept of God? Yes. Okay. Yes, what is, is that difference? I don't want to get too caught up in definitions. And I do. Jordan Peterson. Now, no, but... no, 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 no. Jordan okay. Peterson. I does just not... need you to tell me what it is you're advocating for and why you're advocating for it. But also I want to reject okay. what you just said, saying Jordan, invoking Jordan Peterson as a clarifying definitions are important. Jordan Peterson hides behind non clarification. So if you, you're right, you're going to piss off people on both sides. If you're going to suggest that my asking you to describe the difference between believing in God and believing in the concept of God is my being Jordan Peterson-esque, you're correct that that would piss me off. So now describe what the difference between believing in God and believing in the concept of God is. Okay. So this is where I piss off the theist camp. I don't believe that the concept or even the idea of God is an anthropomorphic man in the sky that hates gay people. Great. Could you answer my question, though? Not the question you want to answer. So what is the difference between the concept of God and God itself, right? No. What is the difference between believing in God and believing in the concept of God? I would say... That's okay. That's a difficult thing to pin me down on, but I, I see what you're doing. And I see why you're doing it. And I, I understand because that. So I don't need you to tell us what you thing. see and what you don't see. Are you going to present what you fucking believe and why? Or are you going to sit here and keep going on about how now you see what we're doing? I don't have all day. Okay, let me just be clear. I'll be clear. What I'm advocating for is is an Eastern understanding of God, not, not a Western understanding of God. In, that, in, in the Eastern um, theology, it's more in line with something called animism. And this is something that is fundamentally different than the Abrahamic beliefs, for example. And so if you were to ask someone in the East um, about their belief in God, they would say that God is in all things. And it's... Okay. Oli, I've now muted you. Despite what you may think, despite the fact that I've been hosting shows for 20 years and have been studying this stuff for my entire life, I don't need a lecture from you on what animism is. I don't need a lecture from you on Eastern theology. I need you to say, here's the God concept I'm advocating for and why I think 
It's true. That's all. Anything else, and I'm moving on because I swear I am completely forever unimpressed with people who drone on because they think they've read or understood more than somebody else and have come to some better understanding. What do you believe and why and why should we believe it? That's it. That's all I give a fuck about. Go. Okay. So I believe that God is in all things. I don't believe in a spiritual godlike figure. In fact, I don't believe in an afterlife. Um, and I believe this because um, everything, God, this is going to sound so stupid. Just bear with me, Matt. I'm not here to piss you off. Um, it's too the late. The idea of Get God to being it. matter itself is very consistent with how biology actually works. Okay? So the thoughts that are in your head right now are basically just chemicals, chemical reactions, biochemical reactions. This Okay, I'm muting you again. This is and bad. this next time when I unmute you, it will be the last time that I unmute you. You said, finally, what you believe. God is in all things. That still doesn't tell me what you mean by God, just that you're convinced that God is in all things. And then you said, because, which is perfect, I believe God is in all things because... And then instead of giving me the because, instead of giving me the why, you went on to talk about everything is such and such, and then you you finished, you left half a sentence there, and then went on to another sentence that had something to do with consistent how biology works, and there was a middle interruption there where you said you weren't trying to piss me off. Too fucking late, Ole. You believe God is in all things. When I unmute you, I'd like for you to either say, what do you mean by God? as the next thing, or why you believe God is in all things. And if you can't do that, I'm done. Try it again. Which one are you going with? Defining the God okay. or why? God, God, what I believe is matter itself. God is in all things because all things are made of the same thing. Okay, stop. Just equivocation. Is this pair of glasses in my hand made of matter? Yes, of course. Is it God? Yes. Yes, it is. What about these glasses deserves the added description of God? What does the God description add to glasses that we were missing? What it adds is that the idea that the glass and you are separate things is an illusion itself. No, the glasses and me are separate things. That's, that's observable and demonstrable. The fact that we may or may not be connected in some way does not change the fact that we are, from an identity standpoint, separate things, just like you and I are separate things. We are not the same thing. The error in thinking that we are connected means that you get to things like, oh, we've got some kind of shared consciousness or global consciousness. No, we fucking don't. Yeah, by the way, Ole, you are, you are straight up either lying or mistaken when you are sitting here trying to accept, uh, trying to defend that based on what you started with, that the Eastern concept of God is fundamentally secular and that they basically just take something like all things are matter. So let's just call matter God. You're made of matter. The glasses are made of matter. So look at the commonality. To reduce all Eastern religion to that, to take away what are supernatural claims amongst many of them, uh, and to speak for them is at best dishonest. It may be much worse, but we'll just go with that best dishonest. Uh, what an absurd, you're just sitting here and going, I'm an atheist. Here's the God I believe in. So already yeah. fundamentally stupid. Under, uh, under Ole's definition, you know what else is God? My penis yeah. and my poop. No, they're the, and they're the same thing, by the way, your penis and poop. And they're the same thing. You have managed to think yourself into ridiculousness. The God yeah. label 
carries with it certain baggage. And when you take the God label and apply it in this sort of um, Spinoza's God extended to pantheism, panentheism, it's all God, we're all God, um, you're no longer talking about reality. You are at best talking about useless metaphors that don't add anything. Um, your belief that my glasses are God does not add anything true and useful to the understanding of my glasses. By the way, you're the Jordan Peterson here. Well, God, yeah. God is that which necessitates our belief and of all things. God, that is what God is. Uh, yeah, is yeah, I, I can see where you guys are coming from in that in that way. And that was a great Jordan Peterson introduction or uh, impersonation. He was trying really? to flatter me now, trying to win me back. <laughs> okay. Oh, like, this this isn't this isn't fundamentally meaningful. If you believe in a god, you're not an atheist. Start there. If you think you are an atheist because your definition of God isn't godlike, the problem is with your definition and how you're using the term. You're committing what I think is an equivocation fallacy where you have a special, but it's a special definition, though other people do it too, of God, and then you want to interact with atheism and theism conceptually, argumentatively, with that special definition that no one, including most people within the Eastern re religions that you are referring to, who would say they believe in a God, would actually accept. If you have a useless definition of God, I really don't need it. And, and this one is useless because you've now basically defined God as everything. God is this grain of sand, it's this toenail clipping, it's this paramecium, it's this, you know, um, I, both, both the lenses of my glasses and the frames of my glasses are God, and the nose rests of my glasses are God, and the earpiece thing and the spring and that screw, that's God, and the, each atom within those things is a God, and uh, every possible configuration of anything and everything, and there is no separate thing. The notion that you are separate from me is oh, an yeah. illusion. No, it's not. We're separated. And the only way that we could actually connect to even communicate that required you using other things that are real. The, the, this everything's God is, um, if everything is God, then God is now a completely useless term. The, the value in life has to do with supply and demand, but also in our desires. If you go out and you look at a beautiful sunset, saw a gorgeous sunset last night, it's pretty because it's not there all the time. Mm -hmm. If the sky were static and the same colors would be there all the time, part of its beauty would be diminished because what we really like is surprises, change. We hate change, but we love change. It's, it's the good change that we like. Seeing a gorgeous sunset, if you could see it all day, every day, then all of a sudden the cloudy sky that you might not think is beautiful now, which I think is beautiful, all of a sudden has more value and becomes more beautiful. A good, one of those terrifying, green colored storms that come rolling in that are terrifying to people and for very good reason they're terrifying but the color and the shape of the clouds and the way the air starts to smell and everything else all of those things it's the change from the norm that makes it valuable if life goes on forever each day is less valuable that's what this is. When you have this notion, well, I believe in a God and it's just all God. Well, congratulations. You now have a useless proposition that adds nothing beneficial to our understanding of anything and diminishes from everything. And meanwhile, all you're really saying is, here's what I think. There's no way to demonstrate that this is true in any way. And as a matter of fact, you are undercutting the very concept of truth by making it about what you think. It's cool that you got high one day 
and you you read some Eastern philosophy and was like, whoa, dude, what if it's all like that? Yeah, cool. But some of us care about reality and some of us care more about whether an idea is true than if it's beneficial. Look at I and her CLE. In her, I'm now a Christian thing, there's nothing at all about her believing in God, about an argument for her believing in God, about evidence for her believing in God. There's nothing about her even redefining God in this sloppy way that you'd like to redefine God to make it more useful. It's all about she finds Christianity useful for combating her nihilistic thoughts, woke ideology, and Islamism. It is a practical assessment where she's now joined the club du jour of I'm going to act as a Christian and be a Christian. Now, it's possible that she's become convinced of the divinity of Jesus Christ and the need for salvation and has given herself over to it, but you didn't hear any of that in any of her message. Her, I'm now a Christian, doesn't line up with any Christian, I'm now a Christian message that anybody comprehends and that, that is consistent with what you'd find in any Catholic, Baptist, Protestant, in a, in a whatever church. No Mormon's going to say anything like that. Um, you know, the, the person I was talking about talked about how they were baptized into the church of later day saints, and it's the greatest thing that ever happened to them. And I'm still baffled as to how they can believe this stuff. But even in just one little snippet where they say they're Mormon, they say more about the belief, more about what they value than Ion did at all. And when Ion talks about atheism, what does she say? It's a doctrine. No, it's fucking not that she chose. No, you didn't. If you think you did, that tells us a lot about why you're really confused. What you should have chosen was secular humanism, and you should have chosen to learn some of that. But secular humanism wasn't going to put up with your right-wing tendencies, and the atheist community that relies on promoting secular humanism wasn't going to keep platforming you after you kept spewing out your right-wing tendencies and your right-wing thought tank stuff and your PragerU videos. So I can't tell you who is or isn't a true Christian. But I can tell you that that message of why I'm now a Christian has nothing in it about Christianity as a doctrine, as a belief system. It is nothing but here's the useful club I joined. Yeah. If if uh, if he hadn't hung up, and I've already forgotten the name because, again, I don't keep these things in my— Ole. Ole, yeah. Ole. Uh, or Ole, right? Something like that. Ole, uh, and, yeah. yeah. Not, not interesting, but yeah. Yeah. Ole— uh, the metaphor, the thing I was going to bring to you is, here's, here's the metaphor. I have two glasses. Both are filled with water. One is filled with liquid water and one is filled with solid water. There is a time, if I'm describing this one, colloquially we know water just as its liquid state, where adding the word ice would enhance the conversation. For me to say, this glass has ice in it as opposed to water, even though that's correct. When, in what conversation would your matter conversation, would it enhance anything to say this remote is made of matter and to instead say this remote is made of God? When is that necessary besides entirely made up concepts? Because I can point to the properties of ice and why the distinguishing property is important. I wanted you to describe that. I don't know if you'll call back in to describe that. And then the second thing would be, if all matter is anti, sorry, if all matter is ma is God and God is all things, be and it's because matter makes up everything, and God then makes up everything. What is antimatter? What are the things made up of antimatter? Are they God? Anti God. Yeah, yeah. Christians would call it the devil. But what are the things? What are those? Because now we have an existence. God is all things because matter is all things, except matter isn't all things. Half of the universe isn't matter. So what is that? Anyway, that was the stuff that, oh, here, we've got Ole back. I'm going to bring him in. Ole, you there? Hello, can you hear me? Ole? Well, it looked like he called back. Holy, and dropped again. I'll give another moment for a reconnect. Otherwise, we're moving on. But we do have time still. By the way, 6% of 744 of you have voted yes, that you can present a valid and sound argument for God. 
I would like to prove something. Are we capable of getting frustrated with callers and, and it turning into an argument? Yes, but what you saw today here was that mostly with self-described atheists. So anybody who says this is a show about yelling at and embarrassing theists, I present to you today's show. But if you just call in, you present your argument, you let us ask questions about it, you answer the questions, and we usually will let you ask questions back, you're gonna have a great time and legitimately if you have a valid and sound argument for God, Matt and I desperately want to hear it. Legitimately. So call in with that. Uh, the, those of you who said the 6%, what does that add up to? Uh, about 42, though now we've also gone over 700. So 46.2 of you uh, have said that you have a, have a, I don't know who the point two is. If you're that point two, call in, that you can present a valid and sound argument for God I desperately, desperately want to hear it. We're going to try one more time with Oli. Oli, can you hear me this time? Yes, finally. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear the questions that I posed or do you need them restated? Could you please briefly summarize? Okay. I have two glasses. They are both filled with water. On the left, it is liquid water. On the right, it is solid water. There are times because of the difference in property that it is appropriate to not call the solid water ice. It enhances it, it makes it quicker. It is, there is a clear reason to call the liquid water ice. You have said that matter makes up all things and God makes up all things, so matter is God. When, besides made up concepts or feel good concepts or some when would be like the glass of ice where I can point to the actual properties that distinguish it from just liquid water or colloquially how we use water, when would be the time to use the word God that would enhance that conversation of matter, would add to it, would define matter further than its own definition? When should we even say God instead of just saying Matt and his glasses are matter? Jimmy, they are one in the same. They are interchangeable. You did not... So then they, so, okay, sorry, sorry. Maybe you did answer. I was about to get very annoyed, but you probably did answer. Your answer seems to be, there's no difference. You've just decided calling matter God and God matter makes sense because some people have a religious concept of God is everything. This can be a pantheistic thing. And therefore the everything that you are aware of is matter Therefore, you could just go into a science class and say, let's talk about the properties of God, and the science class should interpret that as let's talk about the properties of matter, the way that you are doing it, correct? Um, I see where you're, I see why that uh, has issues. That's why I said uh, the concept of God and not God as a... But you just said they a, are uh, one and the same. Are they one and the same or not? If you walked into a science class and used your definition of God, would it matter that you said God? Would it be, no, every, like, we'll even say everyone understands your definition and agrees with it. If you said, hey, yeah. let's talk about the properties of God, everybody there would interpret that as let's talk about the properties of matter because it's an entirely interchangeable thing. Correct? And, uh, no, you, you're correct that no, they would not... They would not follow. No, that, I just they... said, yes, I, that's not what I said. I said they do follow. Let's assume they all hold okay. the exact okay. same definition of God as you. It would not change in a science class full of people. They would just hear God and think matter. They would and use that word the exact same way, the way I might use yeah, water sure. and H2O. Okay, great. So on to the second question, because we've already covered why that's a useless equivocation. And we don't need to do it again. If you didn't see that part, you can watch the, if it was after your call, you can watch that back. The, then question number two was, if God is everything because God is matter, what is God in relation to antimatter, which makes up more than half of the universe? They would be the same as well. And maybe my so, definition of matter wasn't um, 
precise enough. You can, no, it's you can meaningless. break it down to the... You just said God and matter are one and the same. And now you are proving that that's not what you believe. You believe God and everything are one and the same. So anything that is conceptual, a conceptual everything or a literal everything, because if God is matter and they are one and the same, that means God or that matter is antimatter if God also applies to antimatter. And it doesn't. Matter and antimatter are different things. If God and matter are one and the same, then God is not antimatter. If you believe that God is both matter and antimatter, then the definition of God to you is not matter. And the thing I just did where you went, go into the science class and everyone holds the same definition and it would be a meaningless distinction, you were wrong. Because if you then walked into that class with the, your new definition that you just said, and said, let's talk about the properties of God, no one in that room would know whether you meant matter or antimatter. This is the point we've been trying to make to you the whole time. You have a broad, abstract concept that you have clearly an emotional attachment to, that you want to make work. You don't even know what it is. And you just, with your two, two questions you answered, you answered, and then your second answer debunked the first one. Go ahead, Oli, if you now have a rebuttal to that or anything else. Um, yeah, okay, you make an interesting point. So if I say that God is matter, then what, what of antimatter? And, and I, I don't know enough about the physics of antimatter to know what the particles themselves are. But, but, oh, uh, but you know enough for, about for... the physics of matter to know that they're God? I doubt no, it. No, no, no. I'm I'm speaking of the concept of God in that look I I'd like to make my actual point before we get too caught up on, on I guess, matter and okay, antimatter. Okay, fine, fine. No, no, no. We're not even gonna get caught up. Make your actual point. We'll just skip past it. Past the fact that we've already proven your concept of God is an equivocation fallacy. We'll get past the point that it is we've already proven you don't know what your definition of God is. We'll get past the point that we've already proven that your uh, uh, your assertion that it is consistent with Eastern religion is also wrong. We'll get past all of those points. Before, Go ahead, Matt. I, before Oli does this, because I'm ready to pluck my eyeballs out, um, Oli, if you were calling in to talk about the concept of Bigfoot, and all I cared about was whether or not Bigfoot was real, why would I pay any attention to the concept of Bigfoot? What does the concept of Bigfoot or the concept of God or the concept of universe farting pixies or the concept of unicorns, what fucking value does that have to any of us if it doesn't point to something that is real? Okay. So the concept of Bigfoot in that scenario is, is some like actual man, like, humanoid thing in the woods and i'm not saying no that no only only stop, stop you didn't listen only stop you didn't listen the concept is not an agent it's not an entity the concept is not bigfoot bigfoot is the man or whatever out in the woods the concept is not concepts live in your fucking brain concepts is your conceptualization of something what i'm saying is if your conceptualization of god doesn't point to something that's real, why do I give a fuck? Because it is real, Matt. Everything around you is real. No, sir. And Listen, please stop assuming that you're right and I'm wrong, because you're sounding stupid. If there is a God and it exists, then let's discuss the God, because your concept of God, or a concept of God, is not relevant to God. But if there's not a God, and all we're going to talk about is your fucking concept of God, I don't give a fuck. I only care, is there a God that you can demonstrate? Yes or no? Mm. Okay. Um, I don't know if we're going to get anywhere with this, with this conversation. Right. That... Definitely not. I'm dropping your dumb ass right now. All I did was ask you to back up something, and you, well, I don't know if we're going to get someplace. What a fucking waste. It, it, that's not the right answer to a yes or no question. Your your projection and presumption of how we're going to react if you finally got I, to the point 
terrible. I'm sitting here with thousands of people watching right now and tens of thousands of people watching over the next few weeks and perhaps endless people. I'm happy. You want to do a bong rip and talk about how you think God's everywhere? Yeah. Cool. I'll probably listen for a little while and then I'll realize you don't, you're not talking about reality. Concepts are not reality. Your concept of God may be really fucking cool, bro. But until you show that your concept points to something that's actually real, it's useless to me. And it's useless to the audience because this is about your specific God concept. I will never give more than half of a fuck about somebody's esoteric God concept, especially when their esoteric God concept is just another fucking boring retelling of what if God is everything? What if God is in everything? What if everything is God? What if, you haven't even bothered to sit down and think about the ramifications of what you're talking about. And both Jimmy and I specifically said, what does the God label add to this? If this pile of shit is God, what is calling that pile of shit add? What does it communicate? That's what it, what benefit is there? Jimmy tried it with water and hard water. And yeah. then there's ice. And then by the way, there's also ice water, which to anybody, if you say, would you like a glass of ice water? What they're picturing is liquid water with ice in it. They're not picturing, we know enough about the context of language that we're going to infer certain things and we're gonna have good understanding. What you're doing, Ole, is taking a God label that comes with thousands of years of baggage tied to various God concepts, Eastern and Western, you prick. And yeah. if you're going to just take that and say, God is everything, and our question then is, of what use is that? What do I get by having a concept of God that God is everything? I know what your answer is going to be. I know you're going to be, I told you, it means that you and your glasses aren't separate. Yeah, I know you told me, but me and my glasses are separate. Just like the poop is separate from my fucking sandwich that I'm eating. If not, why don't you eat shit? Yep. Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer of The Line, and I only became a woodworker for the puns. That's not important. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so on our Patreon or as a channel member, and you can actually support specific shows and specific hosts in special tiers on those. Check those options out. Also, you can leave a super thanks and get a little highlighted deal, but if all else fails, you can always like, you can subscribe, and leave a comment. Now, here are some suggestions because I don't care about the algorithm. I am the algorithm. Bye.